Humans have always told stories. It's a way of, it's a way of remembering, escaping our reality and, and our present. So it's it's a way of, well, quite frankly, being at least for a moment some place else than where you are. And for Anderson, it's just for a short moment, a glimpse of what could be if things were just a little different. So if we don't chop down the trees or cut the flowers, and if we let the dandelions grow in the ditch, something, something beautiful might happen. When I read the story as, as a child, it's about the imagination, the fantasy. As an adult, there's a, a great level of complexity in his story that reflects the societies and reality that we live in. What we wanted to create is not something that we can immediately grasp as the object of an architecture. You cannot really understand it just by looking at it, but you really must experience what's the space, the sequence, the journey. The overarching creative concept was, in short, to create a space that spoke like Anderson and could present the world of Anderson as most people think they know, as a place where you could open up brand new perspectives. Because Anderson is, of course, a lot more than just the fairy tales. He's a lot darker and deeper than most of us would care to, to admit or even acknowledge. He has just been completely embedded in Danish culture. We grow up with the idioms. We know the, the imagery of his fairy tales without even perhaps having read the fairy tales. It's just a fundamental thing. All Danes have them standing somewhere on a shelf at home. The world that he writes about is not this fairytale realm that you have to travel to on a magical carpet. It's our world. It's, it's the weeds that grow in our ditch. And we can go and look at those things and we can reconnect with them in a different way and we can reconnect with ourselves. It has really been about creating a space where curiosity is in focus. Distill Anderson and use him everywhere in the museums. It has to be him, his spirit and his sort of uniqueness that is in everything that we do. It's not a space to talk about or speak about Andersen, but the, the space that speak us Andersen. The architecture becomes a timeless storytelling for future generations. The common timelessness that we aim to achieve between the Japanese culture and Danish culture has a lot to do with the appreciation of nature. The simplicity of the design and uses of the materials all comes down to this. And when things function well, when things age well, that's where the true beauty reveals. We try to put his way of telling stories into the garden as well, to create a space where imagination and curiosity can just run wild. The sunken garden gives perspective so that you feel that you're walking in the treetops. But it also opens up for these big glass facades that we have in the museum because light transforms the experience. Physically trying to, to have people balance the real world to one side and then Anderson's universe to the other, blurring the borderline where, when do I enter? When does it end? Can I find magical things out in the garden as well? Is Perhaps you can if you look close enough. In the stories, there's a lot of a space for ones to imagine. There's a lot of complexity and ambiguity. I believe that journey of that wandering and being lost is created by this series of circles. The circularity is a bigger part of the concept. It creates harmony and it creates you know, calmness. It could be small to express the universe, or it could be immersive or enormous, where you don't recognize the border. It has this infinity. It's an intention to recreate this meandering narratives, the stories that are not singular, but there's always like a flip, and then the surprises, and then interpreted into the form of architecture not to create like a dark box full of projections, but rather 
to play with the architecture that becomes part of the scenographic setting that adds to this blurriness of reality and fantasy. For instance, the Little Mermaid space has this glass that has the shallow water above. So when you are below, you actually feel that you are at the bottom of the ocean. And these mixed sensations of you know, longing and, and sadness, but feeling overwhelmed and the pressure, the water, the depths, uh, it really represents feelings and emotions. He speaks to the human heart, basically, and the human mind. So it's it's completely universal. It's about vanity, we're all vain. It's about sadness, we can all be sad. It's about love, we all hopefully feel love at some point. So that's, to me, why Anderson is just timeless because he speaks of human life and, and all that encompasses. So it's not just the happiness, it's also the sadness and it is everything in between. He manages to make the most common thing magical, to re-enchant that, that which we completely ignore. The, the extraordinary in the ordinary of human existence, I think.